I'm surprised two old guys and the Plastic Sword Brigade lost to a guy who controls animals. I'm Justin. Are you happy to see me, or are those two ferrets in a bag who have acquired a taste for testicles? I'm Sam. Why does your staff have a butt on it? I'm Jackie. This is Beastmaster 3. Uh, I'm Praxis. On Secret Madness. Oh, Praxis. Hello, welcome to Stinger Madness, the podcast about bad movies for bad movie lovers. I'm your host, Justin, from here. Usually Sam and Jackie, and this week we have Sam and Jackie here. Uh, on the show, we're rounding out the final series, or the final movie in the film series, The Beastmaster, uh, which was, we started this series, I think, on year one. Like, Beastmaster might have been, like, one of our first ten episodes, so this has been a long time coming. Uh, starring Mark Singer. Uh, Tony Todd, and who else we got? Oh. Sandra Hess, Casper uh, uh, Van fucking Dean. Yeah, that's what I was going to yeah. say. Uh, and the villain guy, he's somebody. Was he? The bad guy from Tron, oh, yeah, yeah. David Warner. Tron. Right, yeah. He's the bad guy from a lot of shit. Yeah, uh, currently streaming on Tubi TV with ads, so uh, if you're going to watch it, that's where your options are, unless you own a copy of it, which I would be very surprised. Um, Sam, let's go to you. Uh, first, we uh, want to mention that the version on Tubi TV is a 4x3, so I'm guessing, based off of that, this was a direct video Go. This was not direct to video. Oh, this man. was made for television. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. All right. All right. So DTTV. Special event on the action pack. <laughs> so what channel was this supposed to go on? Because what was the action pack? USA? USA? Yeah, it was USA, wasn't it? Yeah, now okay. I know what you're talking about. Okay. I thought you were just being silly. so. Yeah, no, I did, again, deemed that the actual airing channel irrelevant because I, I see Action Pack. I'm like, oh, Action Pack. Everybody knows what that is. <laughs> or do we? I think it was USA. I would imagine. Either USA or TBS. Yeah. Or the Sci-Fi channel. No, nah, Sci-Fi wasn't around no. in 96, I don't think. Were, I think barely. they barely were. And they were, there was weird shit. There was nothing but reruns. And then they had like that show Lex mm -hmm. and uh, the one that I like so much, the Henson. What about, uh, oh yeah. Um, oh man, I'm blanking on what that is. Uh, space ship show. Uh, fuck. Are you kidding me right Farscape. now? Farscape. Farscape. Um, wasn't uh, uh, the uh, Jonathan Frakes, isn't this weird show on uh, sci-fi at that point too? Oh, uh, I don't know. I thought that was syndicated when it was Canadian, but I'm not sure. Okay. Either way, this movie, uh, you can, this happens as a series of the executive producer of the first film, Silvio Tibet. Free Tibet. Who's, it's spelled differently. Damn it. <laughs> Tabalt, maybe. I don't know. He's, he's Lebanese. Okay. Um, he is getting every drop he can out of Beastmaster, because if you look at his stuff, there's some interesting it's not a long filmography of his productions. This is the only thing that really hit big. And so this is probably his only source of cash is writing out Beastmaster as long as he can. Mm -hmm. He actually directed the second one. Okay. And then this springboards directly into the television series that made three seasons where they replace, replaced Mark Singer with David Goddard or Daniel Goddard. Sorry. No, Daniel Goddard. Wasn't Who's Daniel Goddard? Who do we know him from? Anything? He's the Beastmaster in the series, okay. right? Right. Yeah. So basically, as well as we know Mark Singer from other things. <laughs> He's a handsome guy with muscles. Okay. <laughs> and he just doesn't. None of these people have the charm of Casper Van Dien. No. Uh this is really the people that are in this are just TV rounders. Um, I think it's Jan Hammer and not Jan Hammer, but that the music's the guy that did the Miami Vice theme song. Okay. Uh, Gabriel Beaumont, she did uh, multiple episodes of TNG and Hill Street Blues, but she's done like an episode of about every damn show. Mm -hmm. uh, David Weiss wrote mostly animated stuff. Like he was tasked with the first five episodes of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, so he's a little bit of a big deal in animated uh, writing anyway. 
And uh, it was the Stu Siegel Productions who did Silk Stockings and Renegade. So that's, again, why I'm like, this action pack was USA, right? Yeah. Yeah, Silk Sco- Stockings was uh, definitely USA, so. And so it was Renegade. And what have we seen the lion in? <laughs> Not the other Beastmasters, because right. <laughs> they kept killing those ones. <laughs> there wasn't even a lion in the other Beastmasters. It was always a tiger. Well, and it, was, it was a panther. The first one was supposed to be a panther, but it was a dead tiger. A doomed, yeah, it's... an assassinated tiger. <laughs> and then Seth, Tony Todd, mm-hmm. that's the same character as John Amos, and he right. was probably just like, fuck right off. But it, I've, I'm so busy. I'm John Amos. I'm so busy. He's above this. Is he? <laughs> yeah. I would say I Tony Todd's is. above this. He's bees. He's not above <laughs> anything. <laughs> so I looked up, uh, uh, well, see, because I knew the the new Candyman came out just recently and everybody was like, oh my God, Candyman. Um, why? Who asked for Candyman? I don't know, but uh, maybe it's good. I don't know. I didn't check it out. Um I feel like if you're Jordan Peele, that's like a just low laying fruit. Like, really, all I have to do is make this better than the original, and anyone that's actually seen it is still scratching their head. Jordan Peele was associated with the new Candyman. I thought he directed. Okay, it. well then there you go. Um, I don't know. I'm not sure. So, so this is an episode where we're just not. We don't have answers. No, that's you. So every episode. Um, I, so I'm like, okay. So what? I, I know Tony Todd's in the new Candyman. Yada yada yada. What, what else is he up to? He is a machine. That guy works uh, in 2019, and this is as far back. No, 2018, This is as, that's as far back as I went. He did seven films in 2018. In 2019, seven films. In 2020, during a fucking global pandemic, five. <laughs> Only five. Huh? Only five. What he, a lazy fuck. Yeah, he is. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like, what the fuck is John Amos doing? He's not doing seven films. Uh, 14 films in two years. You know, he's still... Nick Cage doesn't even have those numbers. He's still riding the Stargrove. John Amos wasn't in Stargrove, Jackie. That's stupid, slick hair Amos. Oh. Tori Amos. Tori Amos? (laughs) David Allen Amos? What the fuck I thought that was John Amos. John Stamos! Stamos! Oh, (laughs) shit. Okay. God, okay. I'm totally lost then. I'm talking about the wrong fucking person. Yeah, John Amos is the Golden Arks, not the Golden Arches McDowell's. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, 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 I think it's a cheap replacement uh, for a Tony Todd and like John Amos sitting at home being like, "Why the fuck didn't they call me?" There's also a point where in 96 John Amos was no longer a young man, right. and he was a physically <laughs> formidable. Uh, presence in the first True. film, and yes. I doubt that he would have been that he in this guy. film. Yeah, he threw a man. Um, it, speaking of uh, old presences, though, Mark Singer was fucking 48 when they filmed this. He's old. Mark Singer <laughs> was 48, looks pretty good. Casper Van Dien, this is the year before Starship Troopers. Mm-hmm. And he's pretty small. Like, yeah. I'm wondering if he got some top tips from the singer on how to get the get the pumps going. Yeah, yeah, he was a little slender man. He also walks around with his mouth open a lot in this film, Mark Singer. Yeah, well. Um, and when he gets eagle vision, or bird vision, mm-hmm. it's like he's taking a shit. Yeah, he just checks out. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> what? Like he just he just looks like he's so fucking high, and then there's a spot on the wall that he's just transfixed on. Like I'm a mouth breather now. <laughs> yeah, the lion's a goddamn mouth breather too. I also noticed that uh, if you think that CVD forgot to bring his pecs and abs, Mark Singer forgot to bring his eyebrows. That guy has no eyebrows. He didn't bring his eyebrows, and some of his hair was leaving. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> I've, I've got to go on vacation from your head. But, you know, for a guy who's almost 50 at this uh-huh. point, right? Like, he looks fucking amazing. Yeah, he's he's uh, still, I wouldn't say shredded, but uh, I would not be envious to have his uh, physique. Dude, if you looked like that, I would actually exercise. Hmm. I would get off my fat ass and exercise. Well, well the curse of America. <laughs> you you start exercising. No, you start it. <laughs> I know. I'm like, tell you what, you set the standard pretty high and then I'll, yeah. I'll start. I'll try to catch up. <laughs> 
Okay. We'd get all hot and have the hot sex. You know what? Cheeseburgers and fat people sex works good enough. <laughs> Screw it. It all ends the same. Me in tears. <laughs> all right. Anything else we want to address here? Sandra Hess? Not, Deb- Sandra Hess is, uh, in my heart, will always be Cave Nug in Encino Man. Right. But she was Sonya Blade in... The Annihilation yeah. is probably her sort of biggest role, which is too bad. She's my second favorite Sonya Blade. The new one didn't have a Sonya Blade that you liked better? Was there a Sonya Blade in the new Mortal Kombat? I can't even fucking remember because that movie is sort oh, of forgettable. I, I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think there was a Sonya Blade. Um, I will say that I want to bring this up now mm-hmm. so that I is can... Is this about Sandra Hess? Because no. that's what we're talking about right now. Sandra Hess, come back to it. Mortal Kombat! You know who, um, I was just watching a video about, uh, 90s dance music. I was actually watching a video, Todd in the Shadows, about Hathaway. Um, what is love? Uh, and, uh, the Mortal Kombat theme, those guys, uh, whoever was behind that, like, made all of the dance songs who you don't know who the singer is. Like, mid 90s yeah. music. It no, that them. that that commercial basically put what was called techno at that point on the map. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, they were pretty good. Uh, so we're done with Sandra Hess. What, what were you going to say? Okay, sweet. So I want to I want to voice my disgust now, just as a precursor for everybody to know. Okay. The ferrets. He did. He named. He he named them Koto and Poto. Like he was so fucking lazy. He didn't even give them new names. And they, one of them died. And you know that those are the children of the original two ferrets from the first movie. Who? Okay. Let's let's just address this before we dive into the plot of this movie. What is the status of critters in Beastmaster Two? Because we all didn't like Beastmaster Two. Dar Dar goes to Jersey. I don't even remember what happens in Beastmaster Two, other than. They saved money by setting it using time travel to just put it in a warehouse in uh, South Queens or something. Right, right. Uh, I know he had Rue, and the ferrets were there, but I can't remember if he said these are the. F- but I'll do my best, Mark Singer. These are the ferrets of Kodo and Poto. That's not good, Mark Singer. He sounds like Master Chief. I need a weapon. <laughs> <laughs> Kodo, Poto. I need a weapon. Well, okay, so in the first movie, though, one of the ferrets dies, right. saving the little kid, uh-huh. and then at the end of it, two little ferrets pop up, right. two baby ferrets. Yes, I get that. What so, were they in the second one? You don't remember? I don't remember. Okay. I barely they, they remember the movie. They couldn't have possibly killed them. In the, You can't do the dog twice and get away with right, it, right? Right, Especially after you did the tiger in real life. But it's a it's an interesting question because if they weren't named Kodo and Poto in the second one and they are in the third one, this movie, even though it's produced by the same guy, is basically retconning uh Beastmaster 2, which they I... kind of do because there's a time I think it's toward the end where they're describing the uh, the the new guy Bay is describing the adventures of Dar, and he's like Dar, the man who defeated Mayax and freed the peoples and didn't go to Earth. We're not going to talk about that. I well, I mean, does that part make it into the song? Yeah. And then he went to New Jersey. <laughs> it kind of sucked. <laughs> Verse three. Toss a coin to your witcher. Um, <laughs> is Beastmaster a witcher? He's just a witcher. Now that you th- No, he's not. Yes, he the witcher is. would kick this guy's oh, ass. He told, like, um, what's his name? Uh, I can't remember. The, Henry Carvel? No, the actual character's name. The witcher? Geralt of Rivia. Yeah, Ger- Geralt of Rivia uh, would beat the shit out of Dar for sure. <laughs> like, his head is coming off. Uh, but first, he would look at... Dar's friend and be like, why does your stick have a butthole on the top of it? You just can't Actually, wait to get to Seth's staff. Butt stick. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't even know that Geralt would waste his time with the Beastmaster because of the character. He'd just be like, that's a nice cat. You should really fuck off right <laughs> now. <laughs> uh, good old Geralt. Um, all right, so he's not a witcher. He's a douche. 
<laughs> he's a doucher. He's like a crappy Tarzan. He's a, he's kind of a crappy Tarzan. And you notice that none of the other animals want to hang out with him. He's just got the same three. I mean, three animal, four animals, I guess, if you count both ferrets. There's even a line here where there's a snake in his boot, and he is like, "I can't deal with snakes." <laughs> You're the fuck. Are snakes not beasts? Yes, they are. But nope, nope. I just don't. I don't do snakes. <laughs> <laughs> Why can't you be friends with all of the beasts, Beastmaster? Because snakes are sneaky. He's not. It's not even that he's a Beastmaster, really. He's like Beast Pal. Beast Buddy. Yeah, Beast Buddy. <laughs> 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 because he doesn't command the beasts. He's not their no. master. These beasts tell him to fuck off twice in the movie. I know, and I love that part. <laughs> <laughs> Dar sucks. Okay, let's dive into it. Um, <laughs> God damn it, this movie sucks so bad. <laughs> I mean, it starts on a jump cut. Before the credits even can roll, it starts on a hard transition from outside to old guys. Like, who are these fucking old guys? Well, one we learn is Aegon. Yes, uh, this was written before uh, Game of Thrones. So, hmm, Aegon. Interesting. Um, And basically, it's just, hey, we're old. What are we up to? I must find the Eye of Braxis. Jump cut to something else. No, he holds up his hands and he's like, hoogity poogity. And then he gets to be young. Yeah. And they reuse that shot like through a couple times during the movie. Right. But his assistant <laughs> looks like a, a mix between the smart monkey from the original Planet of the Apes. Dr. Cornelius. Yes. And Albert Einstein. Yeah. Yeah. He's got Albert Einstein's hair and a monkey's face. <laughs> I mean, he even has the monkey's glasses. Uh-huh. Uh, actor Olaf Pooley. And I was thinking that like when I saw him, I was like, oh, man, this guy's like the keyboardist for... Like the stand-in for yes. Right. It's like the old guy, the old session guy they bring in when somebody's sick. And that's where like, he's like, we have to find more sacrifices. And he's like, dude, I got to go to Cleveland and do a show. This is big for me. Right. <laughs> Prog rock. Um, It's so weird, this beginning. Okay. And, and they also mention like before the cut there's a and death stalker too because he wants dar and king tall his brother wait a minute dar's never had a brother before now he does yes he did no he had a sister and he banged her he had a half brother from the king who was his father that ends up taking over he was the little kid in the in the with the sling at the end of the first one Yep, she's right. That, that is a brother. character in Yeah. So their age difference is like really a lot. They they kept it pretty good. This is one of the things that they did okay with in uh in keeping with the first film. The lion not being a spray painted tiger yeah. would be what they didn't keep in keeping. <laughs> so tall was an accident. Are we just gonna I mean, because it's like a thirty year age difference. No. Like his is was their dad like Michael Douglas? Like Well the first yep. the first wife got you know. The first what? The first wife had an accident. And then he replaced her with, with Catherine some witches. with Catherine Zeta Jones. Yeah. And yeah, wasn't Dar born from a cow or some shit? Yes. And so, they pay homage to that with the villagers that are cutting through the woods. That's the same kind of cow. Uh, <laughs> Okay, paying I, homage <laughs> to the original. So there's a lot hey, of these. Dar, we brought your mom with us. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he wasn't even going to help those people that were getting robbed. He thought he was saving his mom. Mommy, <laughs> <laughs> this is a soft spot for all cows like that. Moo, mommy. <laughs> there's a there is a lot of these really weird things like that mm-hmm. in the movie that I noticed that it was like, oh, okay. They're so they're paying homage to the first one. <laughs> I don't. I think it was just a cow towing a cart, honey. <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying it was the same cow that he was born from. Okay. There was two oxes, actually. Yeah. Yeah. With balls. It wasn't. You're just confusing Dar even more. 
gets confused easily. Okay, meanwhile, uh, he's Dar is just out in the wilderness because that's where he tells us he lives. Um, I guess if I was from a town that was built on stilts, I would also just be like, I'm going to live out in the trees. It's safer. Um, and he's just out there hot dogging. That's what Dar does. He just goes out into fields and starts tossing his sword around and having his bird fly all over the place and then land on his arm and then take off. And he's like, Arr! and uh, then tosses his sword around. That's his job. He cut some flowers while he was out there yeah. with his sword. There's a little bit of strange business in this whole thing where periodically he just talks to someone. He's like, I just have to live out in the wilderness and survive. Like... He's an outcast or something. I don't know what Dar does on a regular basis. Maybe he's a dirty hippie. He's like one with Nate, one of those one with nature guys, like uh, bathing. What? Yeah, because if you kind of think about it, right, his brother is like, hey, you know, why don't you stay here with me in the kingdom, you know, and and kick it in style? And he's like, no, I got to I live in the, I live in a ditch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, he's living in the ditch by the side of the road, and every once in a while, somebody comes by with a wagon and pokes him to make sure he's not a dead guy. Mommy? <laughs> All right, so... Yeah, every every four days, he uh, lets the two ferrets just take the cheese down off his balls. They like it. <laughs> That's so gross. <laughs> well, it's like a dog licking your feet, right? Mm. It's salty. It's a salt lick for them. I hate this show. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this eagle, it's flying around. It's not an eagle. Yeah, it is. What it, What else would it be? It's a hawk. A hawk. It's what a, are you fucking stupid? Like, eagles bird. have white hair. It's a, it's a flying critter, okay? <laughs> Might as well be a damn bat. Who cares? It's flying around and sees this family getting cart jacked by some ruffians. Uh, and, uh, so they're like, no, and they break the statue of Braxis that the kids got. It looks like a shitty action figure, uh, and... But it's made out of solid wood, so this guy's gotta be pretty strong if he's breaking off a piece of the arm and shit. Maybe it's balsa. Um... But it's painted gold, so, I mean, it kinda looks nice. Flips it over, the foot says, made in China. Oh! <laughs> That's why it's cheap and shitty. You know, one of those t digs I'm taking it. China's products that they make. Okay. Um, hey, they only put formaldehyde in that one case of toothpaste. Okay. And that's because they put a whole, they put a shitload of GHB in those aqua dots. Mm, where do I get those? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They, they, somebody rounded all those up when it, like, it was like, Oh, there's going to be a recall on the aqua dots. They're full of GHB. And there was like six guys are like, Get to the dollar <laughs> store now. <laughs> Six guys. <laughs> okay. Um, so Dar and uh, Rue the lion, they uh, they swing in and start beating up the guys. Uh, Rue's doing a pretty good job of reminding me of the film Roar. Uh, and I had a little bit of PSD there. Uh, PTSD? PSD? Um, yeah. Yeah. It's after Roar, anytime I see an animal in a movie now, I'm uh -huh. like, oh, God damn it, what did they do to this thing? Uh, it's going to eat a guy. Um, and then Kodo and Poto, they run in, and they take a guy's belt who's laying on the ground, and I'm like, okay, so shenanigans are coming? We never see that guy. Like, there was no payoff to the guy's belt coming off. His pants are still probably on. No, dude, they're just stealing shit. They're little thieves. Belts? It, it was shiny. Okay. But, but I will say that I'm not calling the lion Rue, because that's just fucking stupid ass name. His name is Gary. So when I'm talking about the lion, I'm going to call him Gary, because Rue is just, no. It's a stupid name. You'll rue the day that you fuck with Dar. <laughs> <Rue? laughs> that's or so fucking lame. you cut him open and he's got some lovely Rue in his belly for his fish babies. Roe, Rue. Okay, it's a stretch. And he is also male, so, and not a fish. I'm just saying, it looked kind of like the cat was out of control in this shot. Yeah. Like, well, somebody put a stake on this guy and was like, get him, Rue. You don't actually have to do that. You just let lions out of cages and they jump on people and eat them. Because people are like steaks to lions. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I like my steak rare. Uh, I wonder if they have like a lion thing, right? Where they're like, 
too thin, too stringy, you know. But they see like a fat guy and they're like, like a, yes! lion, a lion buffet. Yeah. And they're like, but it's people. <laughs> yeah, it's people. And they're like, I like the fat ones. They really make my coat shiny. I don't think there's such a thing as lion buffets. <laughs> That's just called nature. <laughs> That's just called living out in the wild. The world is the lion's buffet. Um, okay. So uh, we have not moved very far on this plot. Uh, they learn, or he leads the, uh, the, yeah, he's going to take them to where they want to go, mm-hmm. but we can't forget that this is our first uh, glimpse of Patrick Kilpatrick as the bad guy who's not really a bad guy, sort of, and barely in the movie. The lead thief? Yeah. What do we know Patrick Kilpatrick from other than his insane name? Being a bad guy in about every goddamn thing that's ever been on TV. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Uh, he was in the X-Files for a while, wasn't he? He was a recurring. No, he was on TNG a few times, and uh, I think he went on to be a CSI. Okay. Okay. I don't know about that either. Okay. <laughs> but if you say, if you try to reverse his name, it's still Patrick Kilpatrick. Like, that's not reversing his name. It would actually be Kurt Chaplick. Kurt Saying Lapkick. it backwards would be what you're talking about. I would be like jumbling it where the for like Ryan Fitzpatrick fits Ryan. You can't do it. It's Patrick Kilpatrick 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 <laughs> Mulroney McDermott. <laughs> okay. All right. Um. So Dar says that he's going to take uh, these guys to the have an audience with the king because they're on a pilgrimage to see King Tall because. Aegon has taken over Albeth, their town, and uh, is looking for some stuff. And they, he's like desecrating their places. And, and stuff. what nutsack mm-hmm. is going to pay homage to a king with a gold painted wooden statue of something that's completely fucking ugly? It looks like a turd. It's a statue of the god Braxis, which is the plot of this movie. And once we find out a little bit more about Braxis, you have some questions about the people of this world's association with the god Braxis. Yeah, you wonder, like, oh, we are the poor people of the stronghold of the devil monster. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> <coughs> so they get to Tal's town. It sucks. He's the king. Where's your king crown nothing? Or where's your crown king nothing? They are on the move. <laughs> what? Yes, they are doing a royal subject's wide sweep. Mm. It's like a royal tour. Okay. Where he goes around and he's like, hey, give me some shit while I sit here in this tent. And uh, then he goes to the next place and he's like, I'm the king. Bring me some shit. Uh, I'm think... also a crappy Egyptian god, by the way. Yeah, well, he's... Oh, okay. Yeah, he's dressed like... You the... gotta be if you're... What is the king's name? Tall. tall. If you're tall, you're like, okay, these tributes really, really suck, Seth. Can we just, like, nix the tribute thing? Mm-hmm. Like, they they just keep bringing crap that we can't do anything with. Also, tributes. Fuck you. If you're the type of king that's like, uh, yes, come see me, but you must bring pay tribute to me with, with crap. Uh, Our town is on fire, and this evil guy wants to re- re- resurrect the demon god. Yes, but where's my stuff? Get, Where's my get stuff? Get my stuff first. Hookers do not pay for themselves. <laughs> and they even say that. Tall is like, oh, I'm the good King Tall. Your tribute sucks. Get out of here. And then Dar comes from behind and is like, well, how about if I'm their tribute? Okay, do do it for me, Sam. How about if I'm their tribute? <laughs> <laughs> and then a ferret crawls out of his pants. And they're like, Dar, yeah. Also, Seth is there. Uh, he's, he's the King's right hand man. And they like, there's barely any recognition between him and Beastmaster until the next time they're in the movie together. Yeah. What the fuck? But also like Casper Van Dien has some pretty wild bleach blonde long mm, hair oh here. Man, he looks terrible. And I want him to, to be like, Dar, let's shred the gnar. Right. Let's drop on in and get paid. He doesn't. They are both. Uh, what is it? Uh, Mark Singer's idiom his uh casual california lifestyle <laughs> yeah i mean there are beach bums cvd really is a great cast here oh you couldn't do any better 
I don't know, like, when's the time that you go, oh, CVD, that's a bad cast here? Because even if it was like, wow, this isn't the character at all, you're like, yay, Casper's here. Yeah, sure, I like to see him, but wow, like, CVD and Mark Singer, they're, like, the same guy. But one's cooler. CVD does not have the muscles, though, that... Uh, oh, he eventually does. Singer has in this movie. Well, yeah, he eventually does. That's why they had to give him that Egyptian neck thing to cover up his wussiness. Well, they they were going they were going to have him uh, beef up a little bit, you know, do some of that Chris Hemsworth exercising. But then they were like, oh, if we do that, he's going to weigh too much for Sandra Hess to pick him up later. <laughs> you got to go on a diet. A lady's going to pick you up, CVD. <laughs> That's going to be your, your, I, in your future. Yes, your Starship Troopering and all that. But uh, in this movie, you get picked up like a little baby. <laughs> all right. So uh, the family tells them all this bad stuff. And Dar's like, oh, my gosh. Well, that sounds crappy. Um, I'm going to go over here now. Uh, and Tall is like, well, hey, wait, before you leave, let me give you uh, something. This talisman that splits in half that our father gave us. You remember Cowfucker? Yeah, um, he gave us this before he died. And I just kind of been hanging out with it and being like, eh, I kind of like it. I think I might just keep it and not tell my brother. But now I'm getting bored with it, so I'm going to crack it in half and give half to you. Oh, and by the way, do you remember what Dad said about you? That you were a freak? Yeah, cow baby. And that he hated you? Mm-hmm. Told you to go live in the wilderness. Yeah. And, and he banished you again. Yeah. Yeah. It's because you came out of a cow's vagina. <laughs> they slit the cow open, stupid. Well, it's still a C-section. I mean, you know. So he was going to come out of a cow's vagina. Their dad was like a bad wizard, right? No, he was a king and he was a butthole. And he was a bad guy, though. Yeah. So he's like, oh, our dad gave us this. It's like, it's oh, it's definitely not evil. Yeah, right? Um, okay. Yeah, he was a fucking asshole king. And this then all we have all to remember him by. Blind guy that's like, oh, you will follow me. And he's like, you freak, get the fuck out of here. Mm hmm. And then, you know, the 10 people that are now part of his kingdom out in the middle of rock country <laughs> are all like, dude, we are not fucking attacking this town with 10 fucking people. Screw yourself, you old fart. Then they push him down a well because they were like, he can't see. <laughs> They're like, follow my voice. And then he just walked off the cliff. <laughs> Everybody is a dick in Dar's world. <laughs> so it's like, watch this. And he just sticks his stick out and trips him. <laughs> what do you watch where you're going, old man? <laughs> Jackie would have thrived in Dar's world. <laughs> His name is Dar. His name is fucking Dar. Hey, Dar, can you do math? <laughs> what is math, wizard? I'm not a wizard. <laughs> All right. So that night, um, some raiders, uh, well, actually, they're not raiders. They're the Crimson Guard of of uh, Aegon. Uh, they attack and they burn the village. And they kill his mother and his father. Ah, and uh, Dar sees the glow from a ways away. He's like, hey, those the fire's still burning. Bright. Go check it out, eagle. Uh, and it's not a goddamn eagle. Uh, falcon, whatever. Hawk, pigeon, sparrow. It Just does call it a bird. get turned into a pigeon later. Yeah. Uh, and so he's, he sees it and he's like, oh, hey, this sucks. Uh, so Dar comes back and he's like, oh man, the village is all burned down and here's the family that I rescued earlier and his dad is dead. Oh wait, he's not? Like he does the whole like lift up his arm thing and it falls to the ground and she's like, he almost died. No, he's a fucking X-Man. <laughs> you know what I liked about this whole scene was the doll thing that they had strapped onto her mm -hmm. to make it look like that was the son. Right. But it was like in the shot, like where his arm was supposed to be, where they just sewed it into her costume. <laughs> <laughs> and it goes flat, and it's just really fucking weird. What's with the Beastmaster series and fake kids? <laughs> Did you notice when they're um, sacking the camp with their fire arrows that all of the warriors had their, like, their clothes and battle guard out garb out on, like, mannequins outside their tents? Yeah. And what they were all the first too? thing... 
What were you doing that for? You just got burned up. I didn't get like whose skeleton is that? Like they didn't ride down. They didn't like ha ha and start chopping heads off or anything like that. They just shot fire arrows. It nothing. Those were marshmallows, gentlemen. Honey, uh, they're not. They, 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 they so that's how they do it in films. Is there's a little little burn pack on the end of arrows so that they continuously burn so that they can keep the cameras rolling without being like cut. All right. Light the fucking arrows again. It's just like a, it's like a torch pack. It's, it's compacted it's wood. Very similar to how they would do it if they were actually trying to burn something down. But that too. Yeah. Yeah. Except for this is future tech, not Dar's world. This is a com- uh, uh, composite uh, stuff. It's like the stuff you put in your fire pit place to, that burns for a long time. Pellets. No, not like those big logs. Can we talk about the bow and arrow? Oh yeah, their their arrows or their this bows is the are most sweet. Bitch and bow I have ever seen yeah. in my life. The skull. I don't even know what the the skull is from. It could be a large rat. <laughs> um, but it's it a is... it's a rat ceratops. Uh huh. Because yeah. it's like yeah. a giant rat that has horns. It's yeah. fucking awesome, right? Yeah, these are a good prop. Like, I don't know why they don't do this in film more often, like in Sword and Sandals movies where you got bow guys. You know, I wonder, because some of the other stuff is kind of passable, too, that they've done this with the intent of setting up into a series. So if mm-hmm. some of the better props were like, we're going to use this for the series. But yeah, I didn't watch the series because I couldn't be trouble. I've never been a huge fan of the Beastmasters, really. Sure, sure. Uh I'm sure the show's not good. Okay, so uh, they're like, uh, the king has been kidnapped uh, by the Crimson Guard, and he's being taken to uh, Albeth or whatever. And so Dar is like, "Uh, uh, I'll go find him. Good thing there's a camel here. I'll steal it. Uh, Dar, God damn it, Dar, you suck. He steals their camel. He does. What fucking bad guy? Steals a king when all they want is the fucking necklace. Oh, yeah. Just kill the king and take the fucking necklace. Yeah. Like, why are you taking him back with you? God damn it. You don't need him. Yeah. Just fucking or, uh, kill him. You do. It turns out you do actually need him because they have to torture him for information later. But they didn't know that at the time. Yeah, dude. Just take it and push him over. It's kind of a. He's high anyway. You know he's high. The king? The king or... Oh, yeah, dude. With that haircut? Yeah. <laughs> That guy's smoking the doge. <laughs> I was going to drop in later and get pitted. Um, all right. So Dar's on a camel. Uh, as he's riding along, tra- he's tracking him, supposedly. Uh, the Crimson Guard, they stop him. And then they shoot arrows at the ground and they're like, halt. And then the camel bucks the Beastmaster off of him. Yeah. The Master of Beasts is injured during a camel incident. <laughs> Yeah, and God you know, damn it. for somebody who's supposed to be the beast's pal, this camel's like, oh no, go fuck yourself, I'm out of here. Dude. I am not getting shot for you. That camel the whole time is like, this guy actually thinks he controls animals. This guy's a fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> the camel's like, when he's peeing next, I'm going to spit on him. <laughs> okay, uh, so then Seth appears out of nowhere, and uh, he, they, him and the animals beat up these Crimson Guard guys, and uh, they chase him off well and he pretends to be like this old man mm-hmm. but it's like n- nobody's gonna believe that because your staff has a bent over the top of it butthole guy bent over the top of it butthole guy so at the top of his staff is a person that's bent over a barrel essentially uh, he's climbing down the staff jackie no yes he's getting ready to take it up the bum hole. I, I i understand that his butt is very uh up in the air from his uh, perch upon the top of his staff and it's a real bad uh, uh whatever you would call that ornament it's that, fucking distracting as hell yeah i keep waiting for him to gaddafi somebody with that hmm. it's a walking stick a really mm-hmm. big one. It's like it's, it's like a quarter staff that he he put a golden butt on top of. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, they're following these guys, but then the the guys stop and they set this fog machine trap that blows. Oh god, ass. this is this great. This is great. This <laughs> sums up how fucking stupid Dar is. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. Because he sees it and he's like, "What's that?" Actually, I'll do it in Dar's voice. Well, that's that. And then <laughs> Seth's like, don't touch it, stupid. And he goes over 
And he, he's like, don't touch it, stupid. It's a trap for idiots. What if I touch it? <laughs> don't touch it, stupid. And then he opens it and fog comes out. And it's like, wow, that's the best thing that could have happened here. <laughs> right. How about a bomb? Uh, or, I thought it was like, going to be like knockout gas. And I was waiting for them to like. Poison that yeah. kills them. <laughs> like he did the worst job here. He opens the fog trap for doofuses. Right. It like could have been labeled fog trap for doofuses and he still would have opened it. I am compelled. I thought it was great though when he tried to close it back up. Yeah. And then that he couldn't and then so it was just like I don't know. And you know, who who makes a fucking fog trap? Right. Like obviously there's a a dullard on the other side of this fog trap mm-hmm. going, "Yep, I could put poison in here, knock out gas." Yeah, yeah Dar- fog trap. Dar's, Dar's the type of person that would uh, pay seventy five dollars for a fake vaccine card when the vaccine itself is completely free, and then buy horse uh, uh, dewormer and take that to cure their fucking symptoms of COVID. Dar's Dar- a fucking idiot. Dar would get into some strange van for a free mammogram, <laughs> not even knowing that he couldn't get one to begin with. <laughs> when the t- when the the soldiers are riding off they're like put this here it'll keep them from finding us and i'm like how the fuck and what they right. needed to do out loud is say don't worry we're dealing with dar here yeah exactly. he'll open this up okay uh, they so should just they- open it up on their oh good lord right right and, he- and here's the deal where the fuck is the camel the camel bucked him off, and he's like... I know, but what is he doing now? Did you just go back to the village? I assume so. He's like, that was a dumb adventure. I'll go back to my burned-out hut. Uh, he's, he, he, I bet the camel has a nice time. Like, he <laughs> goes back to being a camel. They seem to be very, like, ornery asshole critters anyway. Yeah, yeah. All right, we got to move on, guys. Uh, so Aegon, uh, he takes the half of the talisman and locks up Tall. He's like, uh, I've got it. I've got everything I need. Take away the prisoner who I want dead for some. Okay. But let's. Yeah, but they didn't bother to take it off of him right. until he was back at the palace. Right. In the meantime, he could have hid that up his butthole. Mm. And they would not have found it. And they would have been like, where's he, the amulet? He doesn't know that that's what they want, honey. So why would he start shoving things up his ass? Because that's what happens when you go to the enemy side. You have to start s- saving your belongings. My key, my car keys. You don't want people <laughs> to take your shit. Like I take off my wedding rings and shove them up my butt. Okay. Because I wouldn't want the enemy to get my wedding rings. I hope you never have to uh, go through that. <laughs> yeah, me too. Because especially with as much as I poop, because I'm going to be shoving those babies up there a couple of times a day. All right. We, and it's probably going to scratch me. We really got to keep this plot moving, honey. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, uh, Seth and Dar, they're lost in the fog. and uh, But Dar's like, here, Eagle, go look up there. And it does. And so it kind of leads them out a little bit. Uh, and they run into uh, Sandra Hess. Uh, her character's name is Shada. And she's got a bunch of dudes with her. And the dudes are like, die. And, but then the... Rue attacks and Dar does his thing and Seth does a little bit of it himself and they chase those guys off and she's like oh thanks I had those guys uh, four weeks it took me to find those guys and they're like why do you need armed men to guard you and she's like um what <laughs> I cause she why did she's, she's just, just out walking around I mean later we find out that she's trying to find specifically the amulet that he has on him and those that are the mercenaries that she's employed to help her but they're all shitty which in makes this, no sense in this because... scene she's just like it took me forever to find those guys <laughs> and then he knocks her she like pushes him down Uh huh. and then later because I feel like there's a certain amount of this we can kind of gloss over she's like part of the team up now and Seth's like don't trust her she knocked you down <laughs> 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 and it just sounds weird, but I guess it's like, okay, I mean, there is some wisdom to that there. You did also tell him not to open up the cup of fog, and he, so he just doesn't listen to you. 
Yeah, so this doesn't make any sense, though, because we learn later that she is being, she's an enforced employee of Aegon uh, t to do whatever he says, I guess. But he doesn't know that the talisman is only half the talisman until after she's already in the movie trying to get the talisman. She would have no way of knowing my job now is to get the other half of the talisman. Aegon thinks he's got the whole goddamn thing. It doesn't line up. Yeah, and he's <coughs> just sort of lucked out that he didn't get too hasty and kill Tal right then. Right. Yeah. It, it's oh, okay. And so then she sees the talisman. He's like, she's like being bitchy and shit, and uh, like, fuck you, deuce. Just I'll push it down. But then she sees his talisman, talisman, and she's like, ooh, mm, I'm gonna play the the honey pot game and rub your muscles. But then later when you're sleeping, I'm going to try to steal this talisman from you. <laughs> and Dar's like, duh, Dar feel funny in pants. Yeah. Did we already get to the part where he showed, no, is he showed her the W in his palm yet? Yeah. I don't remember the W in the palm. I do. Okay. Was it in they the first brand one? Him when he's a baby. Okay. Mm. All right. Like right but after he comes out of the cow, they, the witch brands him, and then she's getting ready to sacrifice him, but... The mark of the beast. Yeah, but then he's is it, saved. Is it W? For... Maybe it's M for Mark, so he doesn't forget who he is. <laughs> so I was thinking it was, a, it was a W for Wiener, so that Dar didn't forget how to pull on it. <laughs> like, uh, I have a W in my palm. You know, you know right? Right? <laughs> That's what you have too, right, guys? So you can so you know to pull on your wiener. I, I don't w think Dar wiener goes here. I don't think Dar needs any help pulling on his wiener. I'm pretty sure that's that's all he does out in the woods. He opened uh, a fog cup. He could fuck up anything. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So uh, meanwhile, Aegon, he's old again, and this time we see his uh, his entire. Uh, thing his sacrifice i must have another sacrifice uh, sir we're running out of prisoners i need another sacrifice uh this magic kind of sucks it doesn't really work very good give me the sacrifice and so they brings out this guy they stick him in chains between these two statue things when he says his little words and it turns the guy into a ghost and then Aegon walks into it and just kind of breathes him in yep and then he's sort of young again right yeah Young again. <laughs> I want to know. Who he's like sixty-two his... when he's young. <laughs> I want to know who picked out his old lady Catwoman jacket thing that he's wearing, his patch quilt. Yeah, that somebody's glued a rhinestone onto. I don't know, and I don't really care. <laughs> I uh, I'm confused as to why Maldor, his assistant wizard is so fussy about having to find the sacrifices. Like, we're just taking, they don't just grow people on trees. It's like, they kind of do. <laughs> you got a whole army out there. You just grab a guy. Just grab a guy. Just grab a guy. <laughs> Quit Who? enforcing the laws on your own citizens to put them in prison. You've got people all over. Just grab some young folks. This shouldn't be that hard. Or maybe be like, hey, Aegon, how about just be old for a little while? Like, you're not doing anything right now. You don't need to be... Young, you don't need to be 62 right now. You can be 85. It's just for a little while. Like, you know, do some rationing. Some uh, of of your you, fountain of being 62. But he likes his black hair. Yeah, get some just for men. You don't have just for men magic? Like, that, you can't just go... Poof. I mean, there's a lady that turns lions into cat kittens later... He saw what the black paint did to that first tiger. <laughs> <laughs> but I will die. Okay. Um, at camp, Shada uh, sneaks in and tries to take uh, the talisman, but then Dar wakes up and she's like, mm, I just wanted to snuggle. And he's like, Duh. Uh, I'll put this uh, talisman safekeeping around the lion. Rue. Well, and she, she doesn't even have a chance at it because mm -hmm. the ferrets have already stolen it right, from him. Right. How can you sleep with a ferret that's crawling around on your fucking face? Dar's a uh, heavy sleeper. And this necklace seems to have uh, a rather versatile cord. Yeah. Because yeah. it gets big and small, like, mm -hmm. whenever it's convenient. Because that lion's got a big, big head. Yeah. 
Uh, so then they bone down, and Seth wakes up, and he's watching them for a little bit, and he's like, mm. I, again, you just can't, it's immeasurable how stupid Dar is, because he's like, uh, the ferret's got it. I think you're trying to steal it. Whatever. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> Duh. Um, then Aegon puts Tall in the Shroud of Agony. <laughs> I found this particularly hilarious because Maldor is like, oh no, the Shroud of Agony <laughs> takes forever. It's <laughs> so and boring. They wander off and you're like, huh. <laughs> and then like a lot of other things happen before the Shroud of Agony comes back into the movie and you're like, whoa, the Shroud of Agony does take forever. <laughs> <laughs> Can't we just tickle him, sir? He'll tell us everything. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe like hard torture, maybe like uh, one of those uh, teeth puller outers, like get the wrenches. No, the Shroud of Agony, <laughs> that'll do it. Oh, I hate the Shroud of Agony. All right, so morning comes. Uh, there's a fork in the road and Shot is like, you go that way. I'm going this way. And Seth is like, I'm pretty sure that's not the right way. Dar's like, but she pretty. Let's go. Uh, and, uh, that the boys run right into, uh, a tribe of savages. Yeah. I'm not going to lie from this point until the end. It's pretty dry. Yeah. The no, movie is. The middle I mean, section sucks. Yeah. It, it's mostly them just getting captured over and over again. Yeah. And it's like, dude, come on. We all know you're a ding dong at this point. Mm -hmm. Right. But why is there a tribe of white guys painted white just hanging out, like, on this walking path. Like, all right, somebody's going to come along today. It, because she sent them there. Shada did. It's a trap. Oh, is that what she was doing? When yeah. They, or they, they, she thought that, or they thought she ran away when they woke up. Yeah. She was setting yeah. up the savage trap? Yeah, exactly. Oh, okay. Yeah. See, I just thought this was, like, random. And then she comes along, she's like... Hey everybody! I know she got this cat in the cage. I'll just take what I want. Why off wouldn't of him they then... stab the shit out of her? Yeah, she clearly is part of because she's a hot lady. Yeah, I didn't see any other ladies in this tribe. True, I don't know. Um, either way, so she gets the talisman and she steals his sword. But then Dar and Seth get free because these savages are blind as fucking shit. Hey, what are those ferrets doing chewing on those ropes? I don't know. Don't care. Another homage moment here. Because the ferrets chew ropes in the first movie. Yeah, that's true. They don't make it through the ropes here. What ends up happening? I get. Do they make it through one and then he like kicks the guy or something? Yeah, kicks and him then in the face. Mm -hmm. The no, axe... the eagle. The eagle knocks the axe down and it chops the other the ropes around Seth's legs. Luckily. But then they're free and their hands right. should be tied up still. Yeah. Well, those stakes didn't look like they were that far into the ground. You probably could just pull your hands up. True. Uh, but they're uh, about to die when the Robert or Robert Kilpatrick, Robert Patrick, Kat Patrick Kilpatrick comes out of nowhere and stabs one. And he's like, hey, uh, I owed you for saving my life earlier. Really? Because the last time you saw me, you vowed vengeance. Uh, weird change in attitude. And but the this part is a little so like Kilpatrick. He's fine because he's like, I know that I said I was going to kill you. Mm hmm. But I hate these mud cake savages more than I hate you. <laughs> See, I'm more of a racist than I am a vengeance man. Yeah. Like, it's more, I'm, I just, I really like being a racist more than I, I'll vow vengeance to anybody, but any time that I can be a racist. <laughs> yeah, I will do it. And see ya. <coughs> and, and then he's like, next time I might have to kill you. And then they're really far apart. And Dar's getting in the boat, and he's like, next time I'll leave. <laughs> You're like, what? Blam, why you just go, blam. Well, yeah, I would like, like why to why report just... a murder. <laughs> <laughs> why don't you just turn and go, no, you won't. Stupid. <laughs> Dar, you suck. <laughs> Should have said that. <laughs> Should have, should have said to his face, I'll just leave. That would have got him. God damn it, Tar. <laughs> All right, so the boys take this canoe, and they chase off uh, the the guys that are holding the lion captive, and so the Rue's free, and then they catch up to Shada, and they grab oh, how the talisman you, back, and they tie her up. How can you breeze over how he sets the lion free when he just runs at people, and he's like, ah! 
like a crazy person and they just all fucking take off. That's true. I, he didn't do anything. He, he just ran anything. at them and like, Rah! and then the lion's like, oh, what the fuck? God damn it. I hate when he pulls this one. It's so embarrassing. Yeah. And I didn't even get to eat anybody yet. The get help. <laughs> He's like, let's do the get help. And Seth's like, no, I'm not going to do the get help. <laughs> <laughs> do the run and scream at them like a maniac thing. He calls that the number 23. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. So the boys finally reach Ombeth and uh, uh, Shada has, she runs away uh, because, oh God, these guys, seriously, they're just jabber jawing. And she's like, do, 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 runs down the hill straight into a cobra. And uh, Dar's like, oh, don't move. I'll charm it with my, my crocodile Dundee moves. Sort of. He's like, sweet snake, sweet. He's basically like, icky snake, icky snake, icky snake. Yeah. <laughs> and once again, paying homage to the original <laughs> movie by saving the woman from, well, it was the panther in the right. first one. But yeah. His now, best friend. His best friend used a fucking a wingman. Uh, yeah. I mean, we called it date rape at the time. You know, duping, you know, duping her into sex. Yeah. Yeah, but now it's a cobra, and he's like, "Well, I can't, I can't make it not bite you because it's protecting its home. What home? It's in the middle of an open fucking field. Mm -hmm. It's just in the dirt. If yeah. that's at home, it sucks. Yeah, this cobra's fallen on hard times. And he's like, "Go live your life." <laughs> but he checks the snake. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good day. Uh, and so then he lets Shada go. He's like, you're free now, I guess. And she's like, you are so stupid. I'm totally going to stab you in the back later. Um, so the boys go up to this circus that's outside on yeah. Beth. Seth uh, is like, is that a giant? And then you're like, no, it's a guy who can barely use stilts. Mm -hmm. This Bay. is, uh, Keith Caloris. Mm -hmm. He is notable. Because during his audition, he had to do some acrobatics for the role. Mm -hmm. He did the backflip and he hit his face on his knee and got a real bad nosebleed and a black eye. Nice. <laughs> They're like, you did the best of anybody else. I guess you're in the movie. And that's why these acrobatics are not so great. So I wonder where they found him. In the line that he was standing in for the casting of acrobats. Right. Uh, I never thought to look for for Caloris in the line. I've been looking everywhere else for that damn thing. Caloris. Where, where do you find it? Okay, that's... <laughs> it's not even... It's Is it over there? Not even that close syllabically. <laughs> yep. Once again, you're trying to to throw that joke out there and... What this... about what about over here? Is it over here? <laughs> Did he Just... ask... <laughs> Did he ask uh, Dar and Seth if if they if he was in the boat with them? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Can I get in your boat, guys? <laughs> All right. So yeah, his name is Bay, and he's uh yeah. Come on in, guys. We're pretty friendly here. We're the only uh tents. We're the only civil sign of civilization outside on Beth. So come on in. Uh, if they're gonna look for you anywhere, it sure isn't gonna be the only fucking thing outside on Beth. Um. And they're like, can we be part of your circus so we can sneak in? And he asks, we got to ask the boss lady. That's Madame Mystico. And, uh, but Seth knows her. They've, they've, they've had intimate relations. Yeah. Unlawful carnal knowledge. He's like, I know I can't go in there. I used to hit that. Gotta go. Mm -hmm. Gotta go. She's a witch. And. Dar's too stupid. He's like, no, just go talk. No, go talk to her. Go talk to her. No, it's fine. It's fine. He's like, dude, <laughs> bro, it is not fine. She, she turned me into a newt. You got better. <sighs> she said a rat. He said a rabbit. Yeah. She, she turned him into a rabbit. Uh, so they've got some relationship problems to work out uh, with, which is basically just XX. So they go straight to the shagging. Yep. Where did, what does Dar do during this time where they shag in that tent? He's just outside flipping his sword around, and that's where Bay finds him, and Bay's like, hey, bro, 
I've heard about you. There's songs about you and stuff to toss a coin to your Witcher. And uh He's he's a I wanna be fucking fanboy. I wanna be I wanna be with you. I wanna be near you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's like the crazy fan that ends up shooting you in the end. I like the way you smell. Can I smell your hair? Dar? <laughs> Why do your ferrets smell so funny? What? Because they've been rolling around on his balls. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, okay. Why do they I'm... smell so funny? Have you ever smelled a ferret or been yeah. into someone's house who has a ferret? They're, they're smelly. Yeah, they're smelly creatures. Uh, sure cute, though. Yeah, so Bay's being pretty weird. But uh, Shada, she gets picked up by the Crimson Guard and uh, taken to uh, into Ombeth as well, so we know where she's at. Um, Morgan, Morgana, we find out that's who Madame Mystico's actual name is, Morgana. I don't know why she was ever. Yeah. And this is Leslie Ann Down, uh, Mm -hmm. British model who provided the earth with about 40 years of hotness. Okay. All right. I would have gone for Sarah Douglas in this role myself, but, uh, you know, maybe she's hanging out with John Amos going, what the fuck? Sarah Douglas was busy having sex with a statue in Conan 2. Hmm. I see. Um, <clears throat> so she turns the all the critters into harmless ones. Turns the lion into a little tabby house cat. Uh, the eagle into pigeon. And what did she turn the ferrets into? Mice. Mice. mice okay. All right. Because mice aren't also as the, cunning as ferrets. You that makes no could sense. could just leave the ferrets in the bag. Right. They are actually moderately useful. Yeah. Versus everyone else in their animal human party. Okay. Uh, and guards come in and they grab Dar and take him to all Beth. And she's like, don't worry. It's all part of the plan. That's how we wanted to get him and the creatures in there, Seth. And Seth just sits there. I guess he's still like in the afterglow of getting screwed so hard. It's like, yeah. doesn't even do anything. <laughs> He was, no, he looks genuinely sad. Like, what am I going to do here? One, I'm afraid of you because you can turn me into an animal. But <laughs> two, this is really breaking my heart. And then she's like, this is going to work. And he's like, okay, when are they coming back? She's like, probably probably a couple hours. And he's like, that's just enough time to bone you down again. Right. Did you notice that she said after the guards leave, she's like, oh, man, the world's going to be so boring after without them. Like, that was her like is her plan to get rid of no she what? says that the world would be boring without them oh. not that she's going to eradicate she obviously isn't going to be the person that eradicates mankind she just jumped on the first dong she saw <laughs> <laughs> i was confused okay um so in all beth dar is strung up over a chasm with one of those uh elaborate death traps that uh will eventually escape from like, just push him into the cha- chasm of doom. No. Nope. So, he's really smart. He sees that if you struggle, it'll mm-hmm. cut the rope faster. So, he mm-hmm. just really starts struggling. Right. <sighs> Fortunately, ropes- what's-her-face shows up. Shada. And in the shot, the rope is cut, and she jumps. And it's supposed to be one of those where you jump, and you, like, tackle him hard enough that you both make it onto the other side. They dropped straight down. He mm-hmm. was going to be fine. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Not to mention that he's too big to fit in that crack anyway. Uh, so his legs would have been dangling, you know, and then eventually the rope would have worked its way over his shoulders and he would have been like, okay. Hey, Dar, just stand up. Dum dum. <laughs> there was a lot of ways that he could have fallen and probably been okay. Like, this right. is not a good, this is not perilous. Uh uh-uh. uh. So they meet up with Morgana outside Seth and Bay, and she uh, restores the critters back to who they are, and then they split up. They're going to go free King Tall and take care of the Talisman in two groups. Um, and then Team Seth is attacked immediately. And I, this movie starts getting pretty hot and fast right here. It's really hard to kind of keep up with what's going on, but uh, the action is quite terrible but awesome at the same time because yeah. it's so bad and cheesy. It, it's really right there with the rest of TV sword and sandal action here. Like mm-hmm. these are Hercules quality sword fights. Yeah. Well, Bay, like even Bay takes on two guys and he uses his acrobat skills to, he does a, like a backflip front 
kick? No, he does a flip up, which uh-huh. is what you do when you get knocked over. Like he distracts him. He's like, I fell down. And they're like, that guy fell down. <laughs> and he's like, I'm up. And he double punches him. And he's also got rhythmic gymnastic ribbons on his shoulders. He does. <laughs> That's his battle garb is he looks like the handles of a child's bicycle. <laughs> And you wonder why Dar doesn't want him hanging around. <laughs> oh, I think Dar does. Uh, but we'll get back to that. Um, so Aegon has reformed the Eye of Braxis. This is he... great because he can't figure it out. He's <laughs> right? like, it doesn't work. And his <laughs> blank, Melbourne's blank, like, blank. here, let me see it. I, it's probably a spell, sir. I, I have experience in these things. Let me see that for a minute. Yep. Oh, just goes together like that. There you go. <laughs> There's there actually you go, little guy. tabs. Tabs that say insert here. <laughs> God damn it. Me not know. And then he's like. Well, he's old now and he refuses to wear his uh, reading glasses so that he can see the finer details on things. So, you know, he he couldn't see the tabs. He's got to have the, the reading glasses that have the lights on the side. Yeah. So that he's he can like, read. I'm not putting those on. They make me look <coughs> old. The guy's like, make you, you are look old. old. You're at best 62 after you steal guys essence you be you're old just stop lean into it you'll feel better <laughs> be 85 it's fine uh 85 is the new 62 so he's like yeah. i can't do it i can't use the eye of braxis i'm too weak i must have another sacrifice and so they go and get bay like very conveniently steal bay well, they were going to go get, I think they were going to go get uh, Tal, because he's the only guy they got left. Right. But they just sprung Tal. Mm-hmm. And then Bay is just still standing there, and they're like, ooh, that one, grab him. That guy that's really easy to see. He looks like, the, the guy that looks like the kid's bike, grab him. <laughs> <laughs> and so... Uh, so what happens if he grabs somebody that's, wiener doesn't work? Does that mean that when he sucks up their essence that his wiener doesn't work? Sure. Yeah, that seems like a fair rule. He had a, there was a fairly young portly girl in the line to get mm-hmm. essenced earlier. So I wonder how he was feeling that day. Yeah, I don't, I don't think Aegon, that's really his motivation, Jackie. I, it's, it's, I want to be 62 instead of 85. He doesn't, if his wiener doesn't work in either scenario, guess what? It's better than one, you know, being 85 for him. But we're going to get back to his motivations later. Um, so they they free Tall. He's in the Shroud of Agony still. He's been there for quite some time. <laughs> yeah, the Shroud of Agony does take forever. Yeah. I guess they'd already got it out of him, but then they're like, other thing we didn't mention about the Shroud of Agony, you're pretty much just stuck there. Uh-huh. We'd have to destroy the Shroud because that's what it takes to get him out. They have to cut it up, um, which is not a Shroud. It, it, the shroud is like a bag that you put over somebody's head. Uh, this is like tree arms. Somebody describe the shroud of agony. Um, it's like snot that flies out from holes and then congeals onto your face. Yeah, it's it's sort of like the wall has a vagina with skin straps. Yeah, that's another good way of putting it. Uh, It's not a shroud. I would call it the thing. If I I had one of these, take him and put him in the thing. Not the shroud of agony. Also, even if you have a shroud of agony, name it something else. The shroud of agony is dumb. Name it Gary. (coughs) Why is everything named Gary? I don't know. I didn't have a response to the obvious question I was about to be asked. Here's the thing. Gary can be just about anything. It's like a Karen for me. Okay? Steve. Yeah. It's like Karen for me, but for men, it's Gary. Okay. But it's it's a torture device made out of undeclared things. And you're instantly associating it with having a penis. <laughs> Gary. Okay. All right. Whatever. It's sucking the life out of somebody. They probably had a committee. There was probably a lot of stupid names and the sticky mind reading wall didn't really (laughs) sound good. So they were just like, fuck it. Shroud of Agony at least sounds menacing. When people see it, it's not going to make sense. Okay. So back to Dar. 
he wants to leave. He's like, I got Tal. Let's get him out of here. We're leaving. And everybody else is like, well, what about the talisman? Don't care. Got my bro leaving. And the animals are like, we're not going anywhere, master of beasts. And a mutiny. Yep. You do not get to tell us what to do this entire time. We have been following you because our paths were in line, but now they're not. So it turns out you don't actually control us at all. You have no powers of mastering beasts. Fuck off. <laughs> That's pretty much what they said to him. Yep. He's like, let's go. And they're like, fuck off. No, we're not going. We're going to prevent the end of the world. So if you want to go pal around with your cute little haired bro, go right ahead. But the rest of us, we're eating some dudes today. The lion's probably thinking, yeah, fuck off. You haven't let me eat one single person this entire time. Yeah, I'm having me some din din. Yeah, I'm going to go eat an old wizard. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe a slightly younger old wizard. Either way, wizard pate is on the menu <laughs> and the bird's like and i'm kept, i'm pecking out some fucking eyes this yep. time yep. i i i am so sick of you just being like fly around and look around for me no i am <laughs> pecking out somebody's fucking eyes i'm doing it bro and the ferrets are like well let's get back in this bag and fuck some more because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's all they're doing in there you know they're like if there's anything shiny we'll come out yeah so he's like okay fine uh shada carries tall away like can you take care of him sure put your arm around me and i'll help you walk back no she's like come here little boy <laughs> i'm gonna carry you cvd it's so weird looking <laughs> i this just doesn't work mm -hmm. like here carry this man <laughs> <laughs> um okay Said the director i guess i will yeah, because there's nothing more humiliating for a man than being picked up by a woman and carried to safety. Owie, I've got a boo-boo. <laughs> yeah, it's like, he's fine. He's, he's coherent. There's no way that they would be moving slower if she wasn't carrying him. <laughs> right. My back. Um, all right, so uh, Dar makes it into Aegon's, where the, the tomb area, the tomb of Braxis area. And he's forced to surrender uh, because the bird gets put in a magic cage and then there's two bow guys that are going to shoot everybody. And so he's like, don't do it, Rue. Uh, we'll just see what happens. And the bird is like, that is what we fucking get every time with you. Mm -hmm. If you would have just let me peck out that fucker's eyes, we would have been done by now. Yeah. And, oh, before this, I should mention that uh, Dar does save Bay from being turned into a ghost and then sucked up, which means that. Aegon didn't do the thing he says he needed to do to open the tomb of Braxis because he just walks over there. He's like, eh, you know what? I feel better. I, I had a V8. Um, I don't need to suck another guy's soul today. I can open up the tomb of Braxis because really it's just putting a talisman in this and then it does it on its own. I don't, yeah. I don't know why I was like obsessed with sacrifices there for a while. Sorry. Ever Sorry. My bad. <laughs> I sucked your soul out. But he's doing all of this so that he can he can be eternally 62. Right. They have that store at the ball, Forever 62. <laughs> <laughs> forever 62. Bunch of Newsweeks in there. Forever 62. Uh, yeah, so he opens up the Tomb of Braxis. And Braxis... It doesn't even fucking open. Yeah, right? It's just a smoke bomb from Alka. <laughs> yeah. come... Braxis farts, slides himself underneath the door, and he's like... You freed me. Now your body is mine. And he's like, what? This is... <laughs> yeah, and you would think he'd be like, why didn't you get a better body, you piece of shit? I don't want this old fucking 80-year-old body. Where's the 62-year-old body you promised <laughs> yeah. me? And then Braxis... <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> I've seen him before on a sitcom. Yep. <laughs> the dinosaurs. <laughs> it's the same. It's got to be the same people. Exactly. Uh, for those that are in our younger crowd, there was a 90s sitcom called Dinosaurs about a dinosaur family, and they look exactly like Braxis. It's insane. This is one of the worst men in rubber suits on the show. 
Yeah, but then his back looks like um Bowser. Yeah, exactly. Yep. He's He's a dinosaur Bowser. <laughs> he's Gomera. He's, he's a dinosaur snapping turtle. <laughs> it's really bad. <laughs> I mean they, this is worth the price of admission. I will just go ahead and declare that even if I hated the rest of this movie, Braxis is so amazing that you can sign up for just that. Yeah, it's too bad that he doesn't get to like berserker run around and like bonk <laughs> things. Right. There is the guy inside of it like cannot see shit. No. Because in the first shot where he tries to grab the eye of Braxis, he misses by about six inches. And then it just cuts to another shot of it in his hand. And you're like, oh, boy. <laughs> that was that was the best one, huh? Well, ba- Braxis Bowser has some pretty sweet powers because he can hawk a loogie and it turns into a spear uh, and spears the old uh, uh, evil assistant. What's his name? Moto? Maldor. Maldor. Yeah. Spears him in the tummy. He's dead. And then he can acid breathe uh, onto the bowmen. Their their he, bows turn into acid and they I wrote disappear down or something. All of his magical powers. Okay. He has sword spitting power, mm-hmm. uh, fire spitting power, mm-hmm. and acid spitting power. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is some bullshit because he would at least have ice spitting power too. Or maybe the sword was like an ice shard. Because you got to have the elements, I, right? Yeah, I guess maybe his his uh, he was just getting warmed up. He didn't mm-hmm. like, trust me, I have so many more spitting powers. <laughs> you guys won't even believe how many different things I can spit. <laughs> I am like a god. <laughs> but all of my power involves spitting at th- different things. He's like a mean camel. And so he goes over to this pit that's in the middle of the ground now that showed up at some point, and he's like, hey, guys, guys down there. Hey, friends, I'm going to bring you up here. We're going to party. And in the meantime, everybody's just standing around instead of just walking up behind him and pushing him back into the hole. Like, Like, no, just push him in. Dipshits. (laughs) They're like, oh, my God, he's going to bring his friends his Koopas. <laughs> He's going to bring all the Koopas and Goombas. <laughs> it's like a Ninja Turtle had sex with Koopa and this was their <laughs> child. <laughs> well, at least he's not bringing the Hammer Brothers because damn, those guys are hard to get past. <laughs> okay. So uh, the ferrets, uh, they drop a fucking chandelier <laughs> on him. <laughs> Ow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, stop that. <laughs> That's basically what he does, too. He's like, you little fuckers. Yeah, he just falls. Oh, shit. Falls over. Ow. Uh-huh. He's, I'm landed on my back and I can't get up. Somebody <laughs> roll me over. <laughs> and Dard steals the eye, the the third eye, the eye, actual eye of Braxis talisman that was embedded into his head. Uh, and he's like, shit, now I can't see. <laughs> fucking blind yeah he can still see but he can't spit he has lost his spitting power because he sees the ferrets and he's like oh no i can't spit different things now i've been i'm powerless against this band of animals and men and so dar uh, yeah go ahead also what is the what is the doofus's name with the ribbons on his shoulder bay bay during this sequence, Bay falls down and becomes trapped underneath his ribbons. <laughs> <sighs> Help me. I'm tangled in my own clothes. <laughs> why Why did I go so flamboyant? Uh, all right. So Dar stabs uh, Braxis uh, and then pushes him into the pit where he falls into the pit. I don't know. But he's not dead, though. God damn it. They're sitting there having a powwow like, huh. Whoa, that was pretty crazy. Oh, shit, it's Braxis. And he comes out of not the pit. But then they push him back in and it's the pit again. It's like Mm -hmm. none of it makes any sense. No. Well, and then we have to pay homage to the original movie where he pokes the eye of Braxis. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Like he did the witch's eye Uh in the first movie that was in the ring. Yeah, he stabs the eye and then blue soap comes out of Braxis's forehead maybe that's the somebody saw this in like tide pods 
<laughs> Numbers. But he's still not dead. He's down at the bottom of the pit and you turn into his green smoke again. He's like, someday I will get my revenge on you, Dar. Unless there's an opportunity for me to be racist. Because I will always take the racism. Yeah, I kind of, when they're fighting him and he keeps coming back, wanted uh, it to just be like, wow, you guys can't beat him. And then Patrick Kilpatrick shows up and kills him. He's like, you're (laughs) such a fucking dick, Dar. (laughs) Fuck off. (laughs) That would have been sweet. Okay, so the movie's over, right? Nope. Um, Back at uh, Morgana's tent, uh, she gives this potion to Tall, and he's like, oh, man, that... Is that cherry? Is that is that Robitussin? I feel better. Mm. And she's pulling off the bottle too. Like yeah. mm, a little nip for me, a little nip for you. It's good. Tussin tripping. Robo tripping. Sorry. <laughs> Tussin tripping. Shows how much I know about having fun. Um, <laughs> right. And so then Tall's like, all right, well, um, I'm going to make some real bad decisions now that I'm filled with Robitussin. Uh, Tall, or I mean, Seth, you're fired. <laughs> mm-hmm. but, I am? What did I do wrong? I want you to teach my brother the ways of being you. Like you're his new dad. Mentor him. Motherfucker's older than I am. (laughs) And you gotta be thinking for Seth, like, no, 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 fuck you, tall. I am not gonna live out in the fucking bushwhack and scrape my ass clean with leaves and get poison ivy and have to sleep in a fucking tree and then have ants and shit bite me at night because I accidentally set my camping stuff up on a fucking anthill. Mm-hmm. Like, no, I'm not living this fucking All, life. Also, I can mentor a 48-year-old man who may or may not actually control beasts. <laughs> a man who's 48 and proven to be a complete dumbass. <laughs> I think a better use is over time. How about he just lives with you? You're his brother. Yeah, just, you know what? Just put a forest up. It's like in a corner of the palace grounds. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just... Give him a fidget spinner. He'll be there for days. Yeah. (laughs) And when you need him, you know, you just go out there and ding the bell and he comes. (laughs) Boo time. (laughs) Like Pavlov's dog. Time to fight. Uh, Right. So they're like... Well, I heard about some barbarians up north. You want to go fight barbarians? I love fighting barbarians. Uh, and the animals tell Dar, we're not going unless Bay goes too. Bay. Bay. Our and that's when... Boy, Bay. Dar's like, all right, it's time to live like a cop and die like a man. Hop oh, on this man. horse with me. Instead of taking one of the jackasses that are standing right behind them. Right. <laughs> like, no. Nope. There's donkeys right there. <laughs> you you could have your own mule, but uh, no. No. You, two horses only. Dar. You couldn't talk a third one into coming. Dar, we will not go unless Bay goes. For Bay is your one true love. <laughs> he's his Bay. He's, yeah, he's his Bay. <laughs> And then it just won't die. Yeah, this is, the movie still goes on. <laughs> well, sort of. They ride off into the credits. Quite strangely. A man. Another man. He's getting his nuts smashed. A man on the back of his pony. A tiger that became a lion. Two ferrets. One of them died and was reanimated. And an eagle that's a hawk falcon. <laughs> I just can't see how Seth is in on this. I just like he's don't. like, all right, no, you know what, Tal, you're an adult now. I'm. I was the hand of the king, and now I have to babysit. I babysit a forty year old man, forty eight year old man who is his own worst fucking enemy. Forty eight year old man who's his own worst any enemy, and his new fuck boy. His new fuck boy, and we can't sleep in hotels. Because the the animals. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think Tyrion Lannister got it better. I I would have told him to fuck off and gone off with the crazy ex girlfriend. Your yeah. odds are so much better. Right? Uh, she's Shada's going to take over Albeth. She's like, I'm going to stick around and help these people. Uh, all right. I'm. You know what? 
king and queen. Boom. Done. No, Morgana. Or Morgana. Yeah, what? Just go with her. We, any Either option. All options are better than Dar and his bay. Unbelievable. Yeah. All right, question time, and I've got a veritable cornucopia of them. I okay. I uh, only have one. Okay, mine. Well, I'll just we'll stagger these a little bit. What does Rue eat? People. He can't. He's not allowed to. He sneaks one here and there. You think he's not a vegetarian man? He's not eating bugs like in The Lion King. While Dar, while Dar sleeping, he Dar crawls goes and into takes town. A poop. Does a little ghost in the darknessing? Yeah, grabs somebody, mm-hmm. eats what he can. Okay, all right. Well, I so. think when they're having non PG adventures and he's really and Dar's really just murdering the shit out of everybody. Yeah. In bloodlust, then uh, <laughs> there's plenty to eat. Okay, so it, like it, when it's PG time, they just go back to their like in, in between scenes, they go back to their R rated place where there's still bodies laying everywhere, and he just gets a little munchy munchy there. Yeah, it was just like this adventure particularly was okay because there wasn't anyone dastardly enough to be completely like murdered with a sword. Mm. The enemies were either inedible demons, Mm -hmm. 62-year-old wizards, Mm -hmm. or thieves that are ultimately better than you are at battle. Yeah. Jackie, question? I only really have one. Okay. And that is, what was the wizard's motivation what does Aegon actually want? Yeah, what was he promised that he was going to get? Because it seems like he's just was so obsessed about being youthful. And he even says, like, once I open this door, I'm going to be young forever. But you're not. You're not young, bro. You look yeah. like shit. <laughs> you look like crap. You look you look bad for your age. <laughs> you're the weird old guy on the cruises uh-huh. that has the polyester suit that's trying to dance with all the ladies. And they humor you because you're an old man. Yeah. How's Florida? How's Florida, young guy? <laughs> I, Boca del Vista. The way that this sort of works, I feel like he's actually just been using the device wrong. Mm. And that he should have found like a really, you know, like Bay. Found mm-hmm. one of him. A fuckboy. And then done the opposite where he puts his essence into that young body and then oh. takes over his... Because that's what the right. lizard man kind of does that to him, but he turns into a lizard man all the way too. It doesn't... And because that happens with this Misty shit, uh-huh. I feel like there's other options here and he's just been doing it wrong. Yeah, so he's just a moron. It's not that he wants to take over the... Does he want to take over the world or anything like that? Uh, unclear. He also has to be a moron because he's defeated by a moron. Right. He's he's thwarted by Dar, so he can't be all that sharp. Yeah. Well, and his professor friend, that is <laughs> the professor. The okay, so the assistant mildew, right? mildew, mildew. <laughs> uh, I love how he was still propped up against the table with a spear through him. Right. At, at the end, uh. and throughout the battle scene, you just see this guy just dead body in it. But, like, what's they, he they, getting out of the deal? Right. He's helping this is bastard. Is he a fuck boy? And he's, no. he's like, when I'm young, I'm going to have to get a new assistant. But, sir, <laughs> I'm standing he's right like, here. That's fine. I got a couple keyboard tours I can go on. <laughs> <laughs> and also, I don't like you all that much. You couldn't figure out how to put that thing together. You're an idiot. Okay, all right. Uh, Aegon is a really bad villain. Um, what the fuck did Dar's dad have the eye of a eye of Braxis for? Like, what? He was a re- evil guy that had a bunch of evil shit. That's just one of them, probably. And then here you go, uh, son. Take this. It's the only thing I ever wanted you to have. And he's like, "What about the monkey paw?" I want the monkey pond my three all wishes. This, if he had all this other evil shit, when they, I mean, it doesn't make sense. Take this evil thing. Yeah, well, I don't know. His dad was such a dickhead. He probably gave it to him when a kid just, like, hold on to it. Like, he was hiding it on his own child, using him in that way. Like Christopher Walken's watch? What? No. So he's like, hey. Had that yeah, watch up me- his ass for six years. Yeah, not really like that, where he's like, he puts it on the kid, and the kid thinks it's a gift, but it's like, yeah, nobody's going to know it's on you. Mm. And uh, 
Little does he know that that's just some moderately evil bullshit. Because he wouldn't put majorly evil bullshit on a kid. Because he wouldn't want to lose it. He, so this is just is. moderately evil bullshit. Because what it does is wake up a lizard man who's fairly hapless and can only spit things. <laughs> sure. All right. Braxis isn't isn't the uh, supreme power that he uh, claims to be. <coughs> yeah, he's a bit of a blowhard. Get it? Mm-hmm. Uh, Sam, your question? Are Beastmaster's powers only good for espionage? How so? Like, if in in the fantasy world, say, mm-hmm. he has the ferret steel, mm-hmm. the bird can see, he's got reconnaissance, theft, and then personal protection. Mm-hmm. That is the end of his sort of what he gets. So those are three things that really would lean heavily towards espionage. Okay, so let's say that uh, instead of Earth, Dar was uh, transported into the world of Middle Earth. Uh, The magic got a little confused and it was right into the uh, Battle of Helm's Deep. Would Dar be useful? He would die. Yep. So yeah, Dar can't make it in a fantasy world unless the world is at peace and he can do shady things. Well, obviously he can survive with a bunch of lazy ass wizards and Mm -hmm. (laughs) like idiot bad guys. Mm -hmm. But in like if Dar was in Middle Earth... He wouldn't be in battles. That would just be the thing. He'd be like one of those guys that the wizards would go to and be like, what do you know? Because he's, you know, spying. And then they'd probably have to pay him money. Yeah. And then he would try to pull his Beastmaster shit on Gandalf's eagles. And they would be like, (laughs) no, (laughs) this guy. (laughs) No, fuck off, Dar. We're eagles that talk to wizards, not doofuses. (laughs) He's like, but my hawk got shot down. I need a replacement. I don't care. You're an yeah, idiot. <laughs> find another normal bird. Now, really, you, didn't Geralt already tell you that you need to fuck off? <laughs> I mean, why didn't Gandalf just call the eagles and be like, and the eagles just take the fucking ring and they fly over the fucking hole that's at the top of every volcano and just go kabook. <laughs> yeah, it's... The eagle's showing up to the rescue is like, ooh, could have made a little bit less walking on this trip. I mean, we've got uh, we've got Delta. (laughs) United Bird Line. Okay. They talk in the book, right? (coughs) I think so. Yeah. Um, Okay. Uh, Does Tall know that his brother and sister screwed? Like, is he a comfortable with where is the sister what the fuck happens to tanya roberts i guess you can't bang your sister forever yeah the 80s only came once when you could get away with yeah they don't even talk about her like Mm -mm. she's not even a blip like they're like oh sister fucker no 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 we're we're gonna blame it on her Mm mm-hmm and we're going to execute her as a witch. Ooh, yeah, probably. Probably. Yep. And that's why they don't talk about it. Yep. We don't talk about her anymore. That sucks. So he, so Tal does know. The king was in on a witch burning of his own sister because she screwed her brother. I don't think Tal's as good a king as everybody claims him to be. I think he kind of actually shitty. You know, that's when he was younger and he was, you know, working through some, mm-hmm. some things, really trying to find his footing as a king. And, uh, you know, because that's what everybody says. That's the same bullshit that everybody says when they're like, oh, you, your brother fucked your sister. <laughs> <laughs> king. <laughs> I mean, that's what I put at the bottom of my emails to this one coworker. Yeah. You're a brother fucker. <laughs> I think that's a good way to get fired. No, I I do not do that. Okay. But uh, I kind of want to now. Last question. Uh, In an alternate universe, are we better off or worse off if CVD 
had taken up the mantle of the Beastmaster. <gasps> because why the fuck wasn't CVD taking up the mantle of the Beast? I mean, you got CVD. He's, he's, he could hit hard with Starship Troopers and he got Tarzan right after that. He did not need to go back this, to TV. This movie in no way approached that plot idea. In no way. Tall's kind of a wiener. No. So, like, but you are Gabrielle Beaumont or that guy who did all three producing. And you're like, this this surfer dude we got, he kind of seems a lot like Mark Singer. Anybody seeing this? Maybe we should pull a Sheila Booth and have him take over Indiana Jones. I think that the original plan and what was really the desire uh, was to have this the cast of the series, mm-hmm. but delays and pre-production hell. And at a certain point, you're only going to hold on to Tony Todd for so long before right. he just leaves to do something else mm-hmm. that... Or 17. The the series ended up where it was with this being, you know, the desire was to take it directly to TV from this movie. And that didn't happen. It took a few years. And then um, by that point, Van Dien even is like, no, thank you. Right. Right. So in this alternate universe, would we have liked to have seen CVDB Beastmaster for, say, three movies? No, because then we don't get Starship Troopers and Tar- Tarzan the Lost City. Yeah. No. No. There's only one Beastmaster for me. Okay. I say no as well because I'm perfectly fine where we ended up with CVD. But, uh, you know, we always say should have been a bigger deal. I don't think Beastmaster would have done it for him. <laughs> would not have. <laughs> Wouldn't have helped. Okay, all right, there you go. Uh, final recommendations on Beastmaster 3. I'll go first. It's a do for me. It's not spectacular, but man, it's a hell of a riffer. And uh, it's way better than Beastmaster 2. Uh, but you're you're sadly going to be always comparing everything Beastmaster to the Hall of Fame classic Beastmaster 1. And nothing can compare to that movie. It's so dumb. Uh, but this was I, I had a good time, especially with Braxis. Um, but it's it's a good riffer. So do from me, Sam. I think it's a do. I think you can actually skip the second one and just do the first one. And this one mm-hmm. is where I'm at on Beastmaster because yes. the second one sucks. It sucks. Jackie, I'm going to give it a do. Um, I'm with Sam. Don't do the second one. Mm-hmm. But this one, I, I just this weirdness about it. It's cheapness, too. Yeah, that you just fucking laugh your ass off Mm -hmm. for most of the movie. And you're not supposed to be laughing. It's supposed to be serious. But you can't help it. Like, when he gets bucked off of a camel. He's the master of beasts. God damn it. (laughs) The camel's like, nope, go fuck yourself, and runs (laughs) off. The film that finally reveals that Beastmaster was bullshit. (laughs) This guy just wanted to wander around in the woods. Yeah, with animals. Because he came out of a cow's butt. Um, yeah, all right. Three dues from us. That's, uh, that's a good thing. Next week on the show, I don't know where we're going to be and who you got, Sam. You got a guest lined up. I do not. Okay. All right. Well, it might be us again. Might be us again. We'll see. That would Actually, be highly ideal. I'm not on the show next week. I am going on a man adventure. Uh, so I won't be back in time. So maybe it'd just be me and Sam. Maybe. I'm fine with that. Okay. All right. Well, you'll find out next week. Uh, In the meantime, get to the chopper.